started. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending our live 2020 CSUSB Graduate Program Expo. My name is John Paul Hernandez, your Employer Relations Specialist for the Career Center, along with Jackie Aguayo, who's your event coordinator at the Career Center. We will be your presentation. We will be going over your questions live. Now we will turn it over to our representatives from Master's Program of Business. Perfect. Awesome. So um, we have our own housekeeping rules with MBA um, that we would like. Um, obviously, you guys know that you are muted. Um, we've got a Q&A at the end. The meeting is being recorded. We were actually completely on, uh, on par with you guys. So that's really great. Um, we are the Masters of Business Administration. We come from the college, um, the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration. It's a nice mouthful that you'll hear our dean say a lot. Um, and today we're gonna go over the different programs that the MBA has to offer. Um, we have our MBA options. We have our high impact practices that we include um, outside of curriculum. We'll talk a little bit about tuition, course structure, and the actual admissions process. Um, at the end, we will, um, we are, we're happy to take your questions and if they are um, related to any of these things. So, Kirsten is my co-host. She works with the MBA program. She's also an MBA student and she is our student engagement coordinator as well. Why you should consider uh, an MBA with CSUSB. There's a lot of options when it comes to graduate education, especially when it comes to professional programs. The MBA at CSUSB holds the premier accreditation for business schools, which is AACSB. Only the top 5% of business schools actually hold this accreditation, and it's not a one and done sort of accreditation. We're actually re-accredited every five years, and we just went through that accreditation process last year. So what that means is that our faculty and the students who are in the program with you all are held at a very specific standard. And so later on, we'll be talking about the admission requirements. And the way that works is that we have a very, very specific bar that you have to achieve in order to be accepted into the program. That way you know that the students that are in the classroom with you are at that level, but also our faculty members have to be involved in research or have to be um, in, in doing this in their business life, um, and there's a, a certain level of education that they have to have in order to be able to teach you as well. Some noteworthy distinctions that we actually have gotten recently um, are Princeton Review. We were named um, in the top 294 business schools. We are best um, online program in the US. Uh, we were ranked in the top 10 which is really exciting, and CEO Magazine, which is international, um, so that is a global ranking. We get ranked by them every single year, both for our stateside program as well as our online program. So highly, um, highly vis uh, visible and very well recognized as one of the best curriculums in the nation. We also include high impact practices. Um, it's very important. We have four learning goals in Jack Brown College and we make sure that we are helping um, achieve that through our students and making sure that at the end of their program, they are able to achieve those. The way we do that is by um, hosting social events. And Kirsten, if you can chat about that for a little bit because I know with COVID, this year is gonna be a little bit different. It is a little bit different this year. Um, Normally I love hosting these social events and seeing all of your faces and getting to mingle and teach you those real skills of being networking in a, in a social environment, right? Because it's very important, especially with business that we know how to handle ourselves in different settings um, professionally. And um, I have changed those to deal with COVID. So we are doing a very in-depth speaker series, alumni speaker series. So. This academic year, I have nine different MBA alumni from all over the country in all different levels of employment, CFOs, um, staff consultants, IT consultants, um, faculty members of different universities. I mean, everywhere and anything you can think of, they're going to come and speak to us about different skills related to resume, financials, um, interviews, all different kinds of 
Kaiser um, is coming to speak about health and wellness. And there's all kinds of really cool things that we're going to be doing um, because this is a fact of life right now and it's not going to go away. So I want to make sure that you're getting skills in Zoom and how to present yourself and how to still stay engaged and involved and learn how to network in a different way. Um, we'll also host um, some social hours. Um, every Friday, I hold an open Zoom for any student past, present, future that um, decides to come and ask questions about different things the university has to offer. Um, about things about getting involved with volunteering or anything like that um, and anything related to our passport which is a leadership uh, program that we run and it's designed to get you networking and communication skills and develop those soft skills that are so important for leadership and management um, so making sure that you're getting learning inside and outside of the classroom and then at the end you'll have a medal and a commendation from the college and the program showing that you did in fact gain those leadership skills I've had such great involvement from students over the past uh, few years that we've run the program that I had to enact a second level last year. Um, so if you do seven events during the academic year, you can get a silver level, or if you want to do 13 or more, you can get the gold level. And we've had quite a few students staying engaged and doing all of those things. Um, I also got a program passed through our college to make sure that you get academic honors. So um, there's not a lot of honors through the university for graduate students. It's very much based on academic honor societies and things like that. The university doesn't do any kind of academic registration so, or academic um, acknowledgement for you. So I felt it's very important because as graduate students, we, I feel like we work harder <laughs> than everyone else um, because there's a lot of things going on life and school and working full time most of the time. So um, any student that gets a 3.8 or above in their MBA program is eligible, eligible to get honors towards at graduation. There are other things that we run to. We do student ambassadors. Um, those are students that are in the classroom, but engaging with us on a personal level and a more um, involved level, getting you out there and involved in different programs in the university, um, representing the student body to us and to the college and the university. So there's a lot of cool things that we can get you involved with, um, get you networking with, and um, really grow you professionally outside of just the degree and the classroom. And the way we come up with these programs and the way um, we, we begin to launch them um, is that we have an interview process that you'll go through. And during the interview process, we identify areas that you're interested in bettering yourself or areas that we feel like the student body in that specific time need. So with COVID, obviously we have a lot of students coming in who haven't been in school for some time or perhaps have not done online learning. So we're working on um, counteracting those potential pitfalls with programs, but also we see a lot of students who are coming in from various backgrounds. So we're looking at, you know, starting programs that are going to enhance our program through um, that diverse student body. So you guys will see things popping up that are new, um, but also for free. Um, you will be, once you're through the interview process, you'll be interacting with Kirsten and I um, on creating those programs. So we really do a, a we really work hard to make sure that this program is continuing to um, be better every single year and is valid to what is happening in, in the real world. So that's something that you can count on with us. Perfect. So we have one degree, three options is how we like to say it. This first one I'm presenting to you is the traditional MBA program. What we mean by traditional is not that it's your everyday MBA program or that it's, it's the, the lesser of the two, which a lot of people like to read it as. However, what this means is that you will have an area of emphasis. So we have a lot of people who are in their industries uh, 15, 20 years, um, and they still choose to do a traditional MBA because either they want to do a career transition or they want to know more about a very specific subject. So 
Um, we have seven areas of focus. You can focus in accounting, cybersecurity, finance, entrepreneurship, management, marketing. I'm missing one. Interdisciplinary. There's an interdisciplinary and global supply chain management. Thank you, Kirsten. Um, so that's going to take you uh, 12 to 15 semester courses. Uh, 15, the only one that has um, a couple extra electives is the cybersecurity focus. It will take you four to five semesters to complete that, so about two years. And the estimated tuition is about $24,000. This is important to note because when we are looking at other AACSB accredited business schools, one of the things that we can boast is that we do have some of the lowest tuitions. So when you're looking at some competitors that are perhaps private universities or UCs, you will be seeing tuition that is closer to 80, 90, up to $150,000 to complete the program. Um, the reason that our, we are less expensive is because we are a state supported uh, institution. So keep that in mind. Um, this program does not require any work experience to be accepted to it. As opposed to the executive MBA program, the executive MBA is designed for those who have a lot of leadership experience or a lot of professional experience. We have a lot of MDs coming back into our program because they're being put into a position of leadership and they want to know more about business and how it works. Or we have um, engineers coming in, again, who are getting into these leadership positions or feel like in the next couple of years they would like to be considered for a leadership position. And so those are really the candidates that the executive program is good for. Their resume shows that they have the experience needed to perform the tasks and now really they need the credential and maybe a little bit of specialized knowledge about business in order to move up the ladder or continue on their, their journey. Um, so there is no area of focus for this. It is a general MBA. You'll have 10 courses. Um, it normally takes four semesters, but can be completed in three if you have the availability to take an extra class a semester. And the tuition is just less uh, because it is going to be um, less courses. This does require that you have a minimum of two years of professional or executive level experience. Um, and that is um, evaluated based on your resume. So you're welcome to email your resume to us and we're happy to give you a, a preliminary evaluation on that um, by emailing our um, general email address, which will be shown on our last slide. Now we have the executive program on campus but we also have a fully online executive program as well. And so it is in a little bit of a different format um, and we can give you more information on that if that's something that you would like to pursue. The course structure for the MBA program is the same across all of the programs. The only difference that you will see um, uh, if you notice the end of this list is going to be the electives. So the actual core cur curriculum is the same no matter you are doing a traditional program or an executive program stateside or face-to-face or, -face or online. That's going to include two foundation courses. These courses don't require any sort of uh, prerequisite um, and you are just gonna uh, jump in and learn about business intelligence, data-driven decision-making, and you're going to learn effective business communication skills. The essential courses, We'll have a boot camp course that is um, included in your curriculum. It's completely free to you and it's how we're able to have no prerequisite courses for our program. So you'll actually complete a boot camp before each of these courses that's going to prepare you for success. And then finally, you'll have a comprehensive experience or a culminating experience, which is a comprehensive exam that's gonna test you on the core of the program. Outside of that, you have your electives. If you are a traditional program, those will be curated in your focus. If you are an executive student, you will have um, an elective that is picked from any of the traditional focus area courses. So getting admitted to our program, um, during COVID, we do have some relaxed um, requirements. So if you have a GPA of 3.0 or higher, we did waive the GMAT or GRE for the traditional program for the fall. That is something that is still um, in 
uh, deliberation as far as whether or not we will extend that for our spring admission. So please go ahead and feel free to check back on our website or to contact us to see if that is still going to be an option for you. So you do have to fill out an online application that is at calstate.edu backslash apply. It does cost $70. You do need a bachelor's degree in order to qualify for the MBA program. You will submit official transcripts once you are accepted, but unofficial transcripts can be used for the online application. You will need a 3.0 GPA or higher. We can make accommodations for students who have a GPA of 2.5 to 2.99. If you find yourself in that situation, I want you to go ahead and email us. That way we can evaluate you independently because you do need to have two or more years of professional experience to qualify. If you cannot take the GMAT or GRE exam. You will need to submit your resume and your statement of purpose, and you will um, sit for an interview with a staff member from the MBA program. Going back to the resume and statement of purpose, because this is what we have the most questions about, on your resume, the number one thing people do wrong is they do not include the months they began and ended each position. So, when we're evaluating your resume and your work experience, we're looking at how long you were in those positions. And if you give us a statement such as 2015 to 2016, we can't tell how long you were in that position. You could have been there for two years, you could have been there for a month. So please include the months you began and ended your positions. That's very helpful for us. Uh, with your statement of purpose, you're gonna answer three questions for us. And you're gonna try to do that in 200, 250 to 500 words. You're going to tell us why you are choosing the CSUSB MBA program, and then you're going to tell us why we should choose you. And those, that question should cover your academic motivation and your personal qualifications. I'd just like to mention something about your bachelor's degree. You can apply while you're still in your undergraduate program. Mm -hmm. So say you're getting ready to graduate um, and you want to apply for maybe the fall, next fall intake. Um, you can apply um, as long as your degree is awarded to you during that time. Before you start your program, um, you can still be considered um, accepted and then just move right from your undergraduate right into your graduate program. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Pearson. Another one of those common questions we get asked. Yes. Um, so and the difference um, on this second sort of line item is called the, what we call the business aptitude requirement. And this is the number one thing that holds students out of our program because this is a meet or don't meet sort of situation. So either you, uh, it, during this COVID time, you have a 3.0 GPA or higher um, and it is waived or you have two or more years of managerial professional experience. For the executive MBA program, the two years of professional managerial experience is mandatory. All right. So the application timeline. Um, it's been uh, actually sped up quite a bit. You're going to front load most of your documents. Um, the application takes some time, so make sure you give yourself plenty of time to go through and answer all of the questions um, for the online application but you will front load um, your one letter of recommendation, your resume, your personal statement, and your unofficial transcripts. And what that's going to do is um, make it so that you can be evaluated very quickly by the Office of Graduate Studies, and they'll transfer your application over to our office to see if you meet our um, MBA requirements. And that is where we're going to evaluate your business aptitude requirement and make sure that your resume, your letter of recommendation, your statement of purpose meets our minimum requirements. When the GMAT and GRE does become available again, I want you to know that we do not have a preference between the two. You should definitely choose the exam that you feel you will perform best at. The GMAT is the Graduate Management Aptitude Test. So that means it is designed for someone who has some level of business aptitude or business experience or management. So if you came from a school of business in your undergraduate degree, it's probably going to be what's best for you. Um, where the GRE is the graduate record exam, that is the um, graduate exam for most other um, graduate programs. So if you're coming from the sciences or the arts, this may be the better option for you. There's practice tests out there. I highly encourage you to take a practice test for both. 
and see which one you like better. We only consider the verbal and quantitative reasoning sections on these exams, so feel free to skip the essay portion or not um, focus your study in that. Although these exams are good for five years and if you are considering further education after the MBA, you may wanna invest a lot of time on this, do your best so that you can continue to use it. Anything else I should mention on the slide, Kirsten? Um, reach out if you have any questions regarding what exam is gonna be best for you. Um, and make sure that you are buying the most current and updated testing materials. So I know that sometimes buying a couple years older is cheaper, but um, it's gonna be detrimental to you because they aren't gonna be testing you on what is in that. They're gonna be testing you on what is in the current book spend a few more dollars, make sure you're adequately prepared. That way you're not taking it a second time. We want to make sure that um, you are as successful the first time um, so that you're not getting frustrated and, and getting deterred from trying to join us. However, you can take the exam multiple times. So we will not, we will not um, take into consideration um, past tests if you don't get a score that you want. Um, those who are in that realm of not having the two years of experience and are below a 3.0 GPA, oftentimes you do need to take it a couple of times because you do have to score higher on that exam in order to be able to counteract your GPA. So that's one of those things that all you have to do is email us and we can let you know what score that you would need on that um, and make sure that you, you understand um, what it takes to get into the program. Having a 2.5 GPA um, or 2.5 to 2.99 is not going to hold you out of the program. We just need to ensure that you are prepared for graduate school, which is why we have a couple of those additional entrance requirements. And that also goes with our AACSB accreditation. So we have to make sure that we keep a specific standard for our students. So again, I'm Cassandra Adams. Um, I'm here with Kirsten Hansen. This is the general email that I mentioned to you earlier. This is the best way to contact us, mba at csusd.edu. And we also have our website on here, which has a lot of the information that we provided today. So um, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are there Monday through Friday, eight to five, outside of lunch hours. Um, and we're happy to answer your questions. Um, hopefully we have a couple of questions um, in the chat. Yes, I've answer? answered two. I've answered two. Um, so I will make sure um, just to go ahead and review the ones they're asking about financial aid or scholarships. And um, a lot of that stuff is available putting in your FAFSA. Um, our scholarship site is available to students after you're accepted. Um, and then you can provide outside funding for a lot of that. And we have a graduate assistant program working for a faculty member or professor um, in a paid situation. And then the GMAT is the general management aptitude test geared for graduate students um, going into an MBA program specifically um, with background knowledge in business. Um, where, and where we see a lot of scholarships, um, especially if you're considering um, a full ride scholarship, um, the only places that we really see that, especially with the MBA program, are for um, student athletes. We have a lot of athletes come through our program, but mm -hmm. also um, cybersecurity. So we see a lot of full ride scholarships come from the, the US government. Um, there's the Department of Defense, the DOD scholarship, as well as scholarship for service. Um, those are scholarships um, that are specifically for um, uh, US citizens because you will be working for the, uh, the American government after the fact. So um, those are ones that are very popular um, and that we see a lot of students getting into. Um, and then another question we had, uh, the deadline for this fall has passed um, as fall classes did start this week. Um, the application for next fall is not open yet. So that will be opening in October. Mm -hmm. um, and then the- You do have a spring intake though. So if you're yeah. interested in starting in January, you can apply for January. And then the, the next one is, um, if I am graduating spring 2021, when would I apply to either MBA program? 
So if you're graduating in spring 2021, looking to come in in fall of 2021, I would apply right when the application opens. Um, okay. All we're looking to do is make sure that your degree is awarded to you um, when you start your program. So if you have to take one class in the first session of summer or even second session of summer, um, that is something that we have had students do in the past and has not hindered them or their admission into the program. Um, any other that's it for the questions that were asked. Does anyone else have anything? Um, we are happy to answer anything, anything about our supplemental programs or um, any weird admissions requirements or anything that you're curious student, about. Student life, I'm an MBA alumni. Kirsten's a current MBA student, so we're happy to answer mm -hmm. questions about that as well. I work full time too, so <laughs> um, it's, not easy, but uh, I make it work because I'm driven and I, I want to better myself and my position. Um, so let's see. So there's a question about what is the supplemental program. So the supplemental programs that we're talking about are things that we mentioned about like the passport or the graduate assistantship or um, being an MBA student ambassador or um, coming and participating in our MBA service team, so doing service learning alongside us or being a business consultant for a nonprofit. Um, we have lots of different stuff that we're involved in. We try and be very involved in the community um, because our MBA alumni are involved in the community. We want to make sure that we're um, giving back as much as, as we can. And then the next question was about um, the January start. That is our spring 2021 semester intake. So the application just opened up on August 1st. Uh, we are starting the interview portion of that. So you're not necessarily behind, um, but we are getting ready to start reviewing applications next month. So you do need to go online and put in an application. The deadline for that's going to be in November, but you certainly don't wanna wait that long. If you want priority um, pick of classes and you want to be accepted early so you can get your FAFSA and everything in line, you want to apply now and try to be accepted before um, the end of September. Um, we have a fully, if you're living in another state, um, we have a fully online MBA program. Um, it's the executive program run through our College of Extended Learning. Uh, ex Extended and global education. I'm sorry, they just changed the acronym. Um, so you can do that. Uh, the, it's structured a little differently. The price is a little different. And again, you are required to have that two years of managerial professional work experience to sit for that program. Um, but that being, you can't necessarily live in another state if you want to come on campus. Um, but our program is very flexible. We are built to have a job. So I work full time and I go to school in the evenings or on the weekends. Um, our classes are hybrid. They're fully online sometimes um, and in the evenings. So you can work full time and go to school full time. Um, it is something that you can very much do. Um, and so I did answer the question regarding tuition. Um, the best way to take a look at that is to go onto our website. Um, which is www.csusb.edu backslash MBA backslash tuition. And it's going to give you options there because your tuition is going to be very dependent on how many classes you choose to take per semester and which program you choose and whether or not you are resident or non-resident. And so it's going to give you um, actual like price brackets um, so that you can sort of estimate your tuition out because we are a program that's fully designed around the working professional, we have students who choose to take this program one class at a time, which is going to extend out your stay with us, which does make it a little bit more costly. Um, but we also have students who choose to do it two at a time, which makes it three years to finish, but actually is the least expensive way to finish our program. Um, and so those cost ranges um, are something that I know can be quite confusing. Um, we're happy to schedule um, an, uh, a Zoom meeting with you after the fact if you would like to email us and that way we can kind of go over your specific situation and help you understand that better. Um, and then I know there was a question about the interview. 
the interview process is not something where we're interviewing you particularly as a candidate to see if you're qualified for our program. What we're doing is we're actually collecting data on you and your incoming cohort so that we can develop those programs and stuff for you and help you identify areas where you might need additional assistance in our program. Um, for example, one of the questions we ask is whether or not you are a qualitative or a quantitative only open for spring, but we'll have two start uh, two starts in spring. And they do we do intake in summer for the online program as well. So we'll do two intakes for fall, two intakes for spring, and then one for the summer. Mm -hmm. Excellent questions. And, and the deadlines for those are very similar, and they're all posted on the online MBA website and in the actual application itself as well. Anything else? That was a lot of questions. They came really fast. <laughs> that was really great. Yes. Okay. Well, we have pl plenty of time if anyone wants to add any additional questions, but you're right. They did uh, jump on that, so that's great. <laughs> I'm happy to answer more questions. I love answering or asking questions myself, so um, are, I also... Are there, any, are there any questions from the Career Center staff that you guys see students often asking? See, well, we do have some of our uh, federal work study live on this event. Let's see if uh, anyone has any questions for you. I'll have, I have a question as an employer relations specialist. Mm -hmm. um, if there's any uh, employers that have directly worked with the uh, graduate school. Absolutely. Um, so we, um, we have one of the best cybersecurity programs in the nation. So the U.S. government, the Department of Defense, um, and a lot of the county representatives love to come and recruit from us. Um, and so we've got direct relations with them if someone is interested in working at the CIA. Obviously comes a lot to our campus. Um, but Target really loves to hire our MBAs. Um, Amazon, we've got quite a few um, MBAs that have infiltrated um, upper administration there. And so they really like to come back and recruit from us, but also ESRI. Um, so if you guys are unfamiliar with um, ESRI, they're a um, geographical ERSI? system. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Ge I was, I was going to start throwing acronyms at you guys. And I realized that I just said, if you don't know what that is, <laughs> it's geographical information systems. They work a lot with um, education. So how difficult is the MBA program? In my opinion, um, I died during my MBA program, but I did it in an accelerated fashion. Um, that is what I needed specifically when I was going through it. So, um, instead of doing what was full-time at the time, which was two classes, I did three and worked full-time. Um, so I did 40 hours a week and then went to school in the evening. So it was quite difficult to manage um, where other students do it just normally, full-time, um, which in the semester program still is three at a time, but it's about six over the academic year. And it's manageable as long as you are um, have really good time management skills and have a really good support system but that's why we make it flexible so some students are coming down and just doing two classes at a time and in that case it's that much more manageable you're only in class about four hours a week um, and then um, homework is usually done on the weekends so um, and then it's a lot more critical thinking and um, discussions and group projects than independent research projects it's it's definitely doable you just have to make sure that you're paying attention to your weaknesses and your strengths um, so hopefully you've been in school for a little while or you've been working for a little while and so you can kind of pinpoint where your weak points are and to make sure that you're asking for help in those areas. There's a lot of stuff that the university has to offer. There's a lot of stuff that the college has to offer to help with the skills um, and the development of any place that you may need assisting or, or anything like that. We have so much available to you. Um, it's about making the program work for you just as much as you're working for it. And since we don't have any immediate questions right now, I will add, um, so I, I attend a lot of career fairs. And the reason I do that is um, oftentimes we have students who are in the sciences who um, have 
found out at the end of their degree that um, either they need to go to graduate school in order to get into the field they want to work in. Um, we see a lot of the pre-physical therapy students, um, the psychology students who um, have that sort of change of heart right at the end of their program and they're looking for work and they realize that um, their bachelor's degree, they need a little bit more or they need work experience. And so doing something like a professional program is what I chose to do. I was one of those pre-physical therapy students um, and it really takes the skills that you learn in your undergraduate degree and makes it so that you can apply them in any field. So if you love the field of psychology and you want to work in psychology, but maybe now you don't plan on being, um, you know, having a master's in psychology or something along those lines, you can still work in that field and you can still do what you love just from the administration side of things. Um, and, and faculty members, uh, there was a question about who, she, who, she, uh, who you should contact for the marketing department. All of the heads of our, our departments are very open and involved with our MBA program. So they're there to give you advice. Um, I mentioned Dr. Victoria Seid, she's the head of our marketing department. She is mm -hmm. amazing and super excited about marketing, but all of our faculty members um, know of us. We have a relationship with almost all of our faculty members. So if you have any questions, you can ask your um, business faculty members 100% if uh, they would recommend the program or if they have any tips or how you, they should get involved or anything like that. And we're happy to connect you. So um, that, that email address that we provided to you earlier, um, if you want to talk to us and you know, ask us to connect you with a faculty member, um, we're happy to make that connection and that introduction for you. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we, we do not count um, school experience or internships towards um, executive level managerial experience. We are looking for those um, general manager positions um, or, or higher. Um, now that is, um, and, and each resume is taken into account separately. So I may say yes to an assistant manager position of a large corporation um, or a regional manager position um, in one case, but not another. Um, and a lot of times what it does is it has to deal with your professional experience. Um, so it's specific training and high responsibility. Um, so um, the level of responsibility is really important. So when you are curating your resume to submit it to us, you're gonna wanna go into detail about things, how many people you were in charge of or how much equipment you were in charge of or what operations were you overseeing. Um, and those are the things that we're looking at, but we look at each resume independently. And so I recommend that you email me your resume and we can see um, what skills you have. These are really good questions. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Feel free to type them in the chat there. Great Q&A session. Mm -hmm. It's interesting in reviewing resumes because um, I, I get that question so often and it's been very difficult to put out any sort of written documentation to assist students because um, we have had people write absolutely nothing. And so um, the, the resume portion, I would think if you are trying to be approved for business aptitude based on your years of work experience, I think that's the area that you should focus on the most. Um, and try not to fall in and how they should do that. Um, and so those are ones where um, I tell them that a CV is, is perfectly acceptable. If you wanna give me something that is your life's work, uh, please do so. And if I need assistance um, understanding it, or for example, a military resume is always something that we take special consideration into um, because a lot of military is very high responsibility and your job position may not automatically say that. So we look at the description a lot. Great, thank you so much. Great info. 
Uh, perfect timing there. Awesome Q&A session. I got to say that that pretty much was probably the best one we've had today. So good job. Um, thank you for all your wonderful questions. Of course, our representatives from the MBA program, yeah. uh, Kirsten, Cassandra, thank you.